Hi, do that well, listeners. This is Karen, and we are pulling an episode from our archives. This one is on, um, this was when we did it way back in our first season. I think it's episode six on Do Tackling Your Dreams. And we had this aha epiphany about how important forgiveness was when you're tackling your dreams. And in this episode, we talk about forgiving our past, forgiving people, and I remember my brother t- calling me or texting me and he said, and also we have, sometimes we have to forgive ourselves too when we're pursuing our dreams. So have a listen, let us know what you think, but we're pulling it out because it's something that's very dear to my heart and to Brenda's heart. Thanks for listening. Welcome to Do That Well, a podcast about real experiences and how to turn them into life lessons, unscripted, quirky, and passionate. I'm your host, Brenda Brown, recording from the San Francisco Bay Area. And from sunny San Diego, please welcome our in-house executive coach, Karen Thrall. Today, we're going to do our third installment in our Do Tackling Your Dreams Well series, and we're going to focus on forgiveness. Forgiveness is the third thing that we've identified after doing some talking that is a really important aspect of tackling your dreams. Karen, I was actually hoping that you would give the context for this one. Okay. So, yes, we were um, doing all this planning for tackling your dreams and we did the time. You know, we did the fear, the apprehensions, the doubt. We did all that. And as I was reflecting on the, our content and I started going through my history pages of my life, it was like, Wow. And this is a new thought for me. And I started noticing a pattern was the same. And every time I had a dream, an aspiration, it required me to forgive. Every time. I did not know this till recently. But what happened is then the dream was awakened. And I went, who would have thought that forgiveness is that powerful? And when you feel like you're being held back, it might be because you might have to do some forgiveness. Yeah. And when you pitched it to me at first, I, w- I was a little confused. Like, well, what does forgiveness have to do with tackling your dreams? But since we've unpacked it and really dove into it, I think we found that this is like one of the biggest steps. Yeah. It's like bigger than time. It's bigger yeah. than fear. Like yeah. f- forgiveness is huge. I know. So for those of you who have been listening along to this series, the entire series of Do Tackling Your Dreams Well started because it's based on a allegory from Karen's upcoming book. And this particular allegory is about a boy named Dayton who has a daydream to build a castle. Within the story, there's a quote that Dayton repeats and says to himself, and it's a quote from Michelangelo, actually, which is, every block of stone has a statue inside it and it is the task of the sculptor to discover it. Karen, I, I know, because we've had talks, I, I know that this is going to get us back around to forgiveness. But I I want you to explain to the listener why this quote made it into the, the allegory. Yes, this quote really inspired me. And as I was developing the story about Dane, this little boy who had this dream to build a castle in this field, um, and he would go every day to the field, and 25 years go by, and he still won't build this castle and he's building everybody else's dream but he won't build his and this quote inspired me because this every block of stone has a statue Dayton's dream was the statue so every block of stone has a statue inside it and is the task of the sculptor to discover it and I went that is all of us we have this statue inside us and we're the stone and we the sculptor need to take the time to discover this dream. And so in this thing of forgiveness, what was happening is I'm realizing forgiveness is crucial to finding this statue, to to releasing the statue. And there's another quote by Michelangelo that I really love. And it's, I saw the angel in the marble and carved it until I set him free. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> okay. So I saw the angel. So think, say it this way. I saw the dream in the marble. You're the marble. And I carved the marble until I set the dream free. 
And forgiveness, it sets the dream free. And I didn't know that until we start working on this project together. I'm like, forgiveness is awesome because I'm going to set this dream free. Okay, I also want to point out that Karen has a much more lovely way of saying Michelangelo than I do. (laughs) (laughs) It's so much more pleasing to listen to. Uh, Sidebar there. That's hilarious. <laughs> okay, so so Karen, you know, you and I have been talking and we fine tune forgiveness into a couple of different areas that we're going to focus on today. So we've decided that the two key areas of forgiveness for this podcast is that forgiveness really helps you let go of what was as well. Forgiveness can help us redirect our feelings of frustration. First, let's talk a little bit about how forgiveness can help you let go of what was. Um, What does that that look like? Yeah. Okay. So the expression, uh, reach for the stars, reach for your dream. You can do that with one hand. Sure. When you don't forgive, right now I want to talk specifically about tackling your dream. Okay. So we're specifically talking about when you want to chase after your dream, there is an element of forgiveness that will be required of you to fulfill and release the dream, okay? To release that that statue. Whatever that is that you're going to need to forgive, you're holding on to it with one hand. So you're holding on to what was, what happened, what happened the yesterday behind you. When you're focusing on your dream, you need both hands reaching for it. A sculptor cannot create a piece of art with one hand. A sculptor requires both hands to create this angel or statue or this beautiful piece of art. Even using both hands, the way they touch the piece, you know, the marble, they'll actually spend time just with their hands on the marble. You've heard artists say until it speaks to them. You know, you'll hear that. Mm-hmm. And because it's they're using their creativity and to actually begin to carve a statue, you'll, you're going to have to have both hands. So for you to pursue your dream, you're going to need both your hands reaching for it. Forgiveness or, or not forgiving is that you're hanging on to something of yesterday that you're going to have to let go of. Okay. So letting go of what was is Oh, is like the best thing you could do in pursuing your dream. Okay, so which got me to think about this. It was the early 2000s and I had this dream and it is so vivid that I've never forgotten and I never want to forget. It was amazing. It was so powerful for me that my whole theme for that year was let go, let go, Karen. Okay, so here's the dream. So I'm in this city, I get off the city bus and there's a person with me and there's a river running through the city. I'm staying there and it's busy and there's all this movement and activity. And this person, she jumps into the water and I'm like, what are you doing? What what are you doing in the water? And she went, this is great. Now, later when I woke up, I realized I was both people. Okay. At the time I was just in this dream. So she goes, get in here, join me, join me. And I was like, no, what are you doing? You know, and she says, just get in here. This is so fun. So I went, okay, okay. So I jump into the water and I'm swimming around and I went, it is fun. This is actually really fun. And there's this current and we're having a great time. And then she looks at me, she goes, are you ready? I I don't know what she means. And I look out and there's a waterfall coming towards us or we're heading towards this waterfall. And she goes over the waterfall and I'm like, no, 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 no. (laughs) And I, I fall over the waterfall and I cling to my neck and I'm in a fetal position. I'm all tight, wound tight, holding my neck because I don't want to break my neck. And I hear this voice say, Karen, let go. And at that moment, I let go and I dropped my arms. I opened up my body and I did a free fall. And it was so real. I, I remember the sensation. And I remember the sensation of falling into the water and this velvet feeling of water. Like I could even feel the water and this current taking me to the bank of the river. And I get out in the dream and I look up at the waterfall and I said, I want that. And then I wake up. So powerful. So cool. It's so cool. It's like the, my, I think it, it might be actually my favorite dream I've ever had in my life. And it's not that I dream a lot, but this one, well, huge. 
to let go is an incredible feeling. It's an incredible experience and it will take you, it will take you so far. But when we hang on to stuff and, and forgiveness, it, it's like this gift that you get to let, you get to let go. That's what, that's what forgiveness is. You get to let this go because it's not going to help you chase after your dream. I'm sorry. I was like so enthralled by the story. I was like, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Can I? Okay. So let me do this. Okay. So just for context, when you and I work together at John Fluvok Shoes, hello, John. Okay. <laughs> when you and I work together <laughs> at John Fluvok Shoes and you're going to transition into a dream of yours, you had to let go of a career you're in that you did very well in. You were doing really well in it. And you were going to have to let go of this career to go into being a professional dancer, which was your dream, right? When that happened to you, what was that like? So just to drive the point home, like, what was that like for you to let go of something so familiar to you and to go after what you really actually wanted to do? So... I'm actually just in this moment thinking of this. You and I have not discussed this before and it, actually just now listening to you talk about this, I'm I'm all of a sudden realizing for myself that there were these moments of forgiveness and letting go um, like that were tied in to one another. When I was making that decision, I remember very distinctly me coming to you at one point. And this was, I think, when I was starting to transition. I, I think in, in my subconscious, I knew that I was ready to sort of move on to something new, but I, I hadn't admitted it to myself yet. This was prior to our conversation where you said, are you are you telling me you're ready to, to leave? I was feeling like I wasn't doing well at Fluvog. And I remember saying something to you about that at one point where I was like, I feel like I'm not doing my job very well. And you were like, no, no, you're doing great. I think you're being too hard on yourself. And it's funny because in retrospect, I think I even had to forgive myself because I think that was my way of my subconscious was like, oh, well, you're not doing well here. Like I was trying to convince myself that there was some reason I needed to leave. And I just needed to forgive myself even for wanting to go. And rather than like coming up with these excuses, I just needed to be like, no, it's okay. It's okay to just just go. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, there was definitely a moment where I just had to really dive deep into the dream. For me, it was kind of an all or nothing, nothing moment. Like I was either going to just throw a caution to the wind and try and make the next thing happen or I wasn't. And so it was like a very, very large sense of having to just let go to everything. And then once I I did. And I'm sure you even remember this. Once I kind of turned that corner, it was like a sharp corner. And then all of a sudden I was like skyrocketing towards the next thing. Like it was no holds bar (laughs) once I did make that decision. Yeah. And I love the way you said like that confession, I want to go. Why Mm -hmm. would I want to go? It's this, this is great. And, and so find reasons instead of just saying, I want to go. I want to be released. I want to go after my dream. I want to be released from this. Instead of just saying that we had to find, you had to find reasons. Oh, I, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not as good as I thought I would be, you know, <laughs> but really the truth was, I, I just want to go. I want yeah. to, I'll regret it if I don't go, you know, and it's so cool. Which um, actually totally just leads us to the next part. We sort of broke it down into these key areas, which is that forgiveness helps you let go of what was, and it also can help you redirect your feelings of frustration, forgiveness. I guess even just a moment ago, I was talking about how I, I was kind of struggling. I was feeling like I wasn't doing well, and I was finding myself really frustrated. I do also want to make sure that we put it out there. You know, we have talked about frustration before. In our last episode with fear, the key distinction here is that with fear, frustration can allow us to accept that we're in the transition. Mm -hmm. So once you have that identifier of frustration, like, oh, I'm in transition. With forgiveness, it's the forgiveness that then allows you to redirect your frustration. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, Okay. So I want to be really specific that we're talking about tackling your dreams. Okay. 
because frustration has a lot of faces and frustrations. We can be frustrated in, in many topics, relationships, all that, but we're talking specifically about our dream. And when we start feeling a sense of frustrations, because we have that in something incomplete within us, it's, normal that we will um, project our frustration, get frustrated with other people and, or we'll get frustrated with ourselves. And when truly we're frustrated because we're not fulfilling the dream that lives within us. Okay. So when people come to me for coaching, my favorite thing to talk about is frustration because to me, it's a gold mine. When I sense that they're frustrated or unsettled, I'm going to go in there and, and we're going to go to the deep waters. Let's go into the deep waters of this conversation. And more often than not, when it's about their dream, they know they're going to have to let go. This chapter's closing because a new chapter is beginning and they're trying to navigate that. They're trying to unclutter that. Okay. The forgiveness for those times of frustration is so awesome because the people that you're feeling frustrated about, that is a gift to you to kick you out <laughs> because your chapter is coming to an end. And that very, those very people, including yourself, that you're frustrated with are going to be the gift that closes that chapter and opens the next chapter. That's why you want to forgive others and yourself when you're in a place of frustration because it's going to propel you closer to the dream. I have a short story for us about a time that I went after a dream and I did not have forgiveness. <laughs> and in retrospect, I, I wonder how that might have changed things. So, so quick story. I'll try and do the Cliff Notes version here. When I was going into my second year in university and I still hadn't really declared a major at that point, I had really fallen in love with the dance department. I had, you know, started out just doing the classes more recreationally because I needed to fill out my, you know, schedule. I had done, I did dance growing up, but never took it that seriously. It was more of an on again, off again. I was, I was a jack of all trades when I was a kid too, always playing different sports. And I decided I wanted to really go for it and declare this dance major. And I remember going to talk to the department head because that's something you had to do in order to declare your major. They said to me, are you sure you want to do this? You know, there's a lot of people in this program that have been dancing their whole lives. You're going to be coming into this program behind them. Are you sure you can keep up? I don't I don't know that I see much of a future in this for you. And it was so discouraging. It, it made me like really angry. And I was like, who is this person? And and when I was younger, I mean, I probably still am. But when I was younger, I was, I was quite indignant. And so for me... It was actually the anger <laughs> at that statement that then like propelled me to continue following it because it was more of a like, hey, man, I can do this, you know, <laughs> like, and so I, and so I did went for it. Say, did you say it like that? I, probably to myself. I, I got this. Hey, uh, man. <laughs> hey, man. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, and, and it was, it was like the anger that, that drove me forward and, and that like kept me going. But in retrospect, I never really let go of that statement. I held it with me all yeah. throughout my dance program. I always felt like I was a little less. I was always comparing myself to people around me. I never really thought that I was good enough. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. Even when I was dancing as my job, I always kind of felt a little bit like I was an imposter or that I didn't earn my place there. I wonder I just wonder. Yes, 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 yes. Like, what would happen it. if I had forgiven? You know, exactly. Because frustration at what she said to you um, was fueling your energy. I'll show you, but it was also entertaining. You're entertaining those thoughts the whole time, so you're mm -hmm. entertaining a thought that upset you, which was distorting and clouding your experience. Imagine yeah. if she said great choice. You are going to rock. You're going to ace this. You would have felt so empowered, so free to just be a student learning how to excel and dance so that you could fulfill your dream. It would have been a, such a different mindset. And, and it's, you're right. Like we want to be set free. So here you are chasing after your dream 
with one hand on yesterday because right. it never left you. So I, I love what you're saying. It's so, and, and not, it's not like, you know, what would, it, maybe my life would be different. It's not like that. Cause right now is when you're supposed to experience what you're experiencing today. It was, this is when for some reason today, these memories are coming to you today. So what does that tell me? You are releasing yourself because there's a dream you're with, that you are pursuing. It has to happen today because the dream is about to be awakened in ways you never thought of. You know, see what it's like. like this is the time. For right. That. Well, and like it's like now I know I did learn that forgiveness yeah. is such a big piece yeah. of that. Like, yes, I made it and I had this anger that fueled me through. But, you know, I think now I'm seeing that forgiveness would have been a much more powerful tool for me in that in wow. that moment. Because it see, I love that. It would have allowed me to not care a what this other person they wouldn't didn't need to influence me. But it, I I also would have been able to forgive myself. And maybe, may, we can't say we can't say with certainty. But I think moving forward in life, if I ever find myself in a, a situation like that again, if I could just forgive that person, mm-hmm. make it not about them. And then, yes. you know, choose to take a different message away from that. But then you said, you said forgiveness would have been more powerful. I think something like that. To that yeah. Effect. Usually we see anger as power. Think about how every time we have a visual of anger, it's power. In movies, uh, scenes on the street or wherever we see a, an element of power. You said forgiveness is more powerful. So imagine if you're feeling angry and it's a powerful, it, it, it propelled you, it fueled you. Imagine what forgiveness can do because it is truly the most powerful source of energy to draw from. And so that, I really love that you said that. That was very cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so no, this is great because we also wanted to talk about the steps to forgiveness. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, you and I, we've decided that forgiveness really involves forgiving yourself and forgiving others. Um, But I want us to talk about forgiving others first. Okay. Ways in which others could maybe hold you back. Um, Well, I think the example I just brought up, you know, you could have somebody say, are you sure? Or question your motives. Are you sure you want to do this? You know, there's a lot of different ways in which other people might get in the way or you know, you might feel like they're getting in the way of your dream. So how, how do we approach forgiving others? Where was like, what's that starting place? Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you're forgiving others, remember what you want to do is just let it go. It's you're holding on to something yesterday and it's irrelevant to you tackling your dream. It's irrelevant. It's, it's a, it's a sentence. It's an opinion. It's an opinion. It's something that's so disconnected from you. And you're, it's holding up space inside you and it's, and you're hanging on to it. So you release it and go, it doesn't matter. And everybody's going to have an opinion. It doesn't matter. What do you want? What do you want? I want to go after my dream. Then go after your dream. It does it really matter what other people think really and so you go, okay, it doesn't matter. And then you just forgive. You know what? I'm not carrying that with me. Some of the things you can do is you write it on a piece of paper and burn it and watch it burn. It's very, very cathartic, you know? So you just write it and just let it go. Ashes, turn into ashes. Um, a, a, a cool thing too is taking a stone and throwing it over a cliff. I'm, I'm, I'm letting it go. It doesn't have any power over me anymore. And it's not supposed to. So you can do these practical things. and But you know what really works for me is it was a gift to me. Them doubting me is kicking me out of this present season I'm in. It's a voice that's going that I can go, you know what? I am going to do this regardless of what you think. So the writing one actually in particular I, I really like that one. I find, and I'm sure I'm not the only person that's done this. I, I want to think I'm not. But um, like, have you ever, if you're really angry about something um, that maybe somebody's done, I'll like write a, a scathing note 
or something like this is all of the ways in which I'm offended or, you know, you made this hard for me or whatever. It's like, I'll write this really, you know, horrible note that I just, if, if I could say all of the worst things, this is what I would say. And then you don't send it, you know, you know, but like something about writing a letter specifically, I, I find really works for me. Mm, um, that's great. I, and I know I'm not the only person that's done that. Yeah, I know yeah. I've like definitely caught a coworker before, like writing a mean email. I'm like, you're not going to send that. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're just, you're just doing that because you need to let it go. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So this leads me, and I think you already sort of alluded to it, but this is why I wanted to talk about forgiving yourself second, because I think, in my opinion so much about forgiving other people is sort of realizing that it's usually never about the other person. It's about you. (laughs) Like it's because something that they've said hits a nerve about something that maybe like you already feel that's a shortcoming for yourself or you already feel a certain way about it for yourself. And so then when that person says it, you clom onto it. It's like if I I thought that I had big feet and then somebody else was like, you got big feet. I'm like, no, I don't have big feet. But like, (laughs) I already think that for myself. So that's the only reason it makes me so angry, right? (laughs) (laughs) Well, even um, using your, the person at the university and it was, it confirmed something you were already worried possibly, or you were already entertained. So she cooked onto something you were like, uh no, you know what I mean? So definitely. I did also have big feet when I was a kid and I did get made fun of for it. So <laughs> there's also that. Um but yeah, you know, I think forgiving yourself. Talk to me a little bit, Karen, about what it looks like to forgive ourselves and some steps we can take for that. Yeah. It's pretty powerful to forgive yourself. It's it's a wonderful uh, freedom and release of holding yourself back. Um, forgiving others, I find it's harder to forgive yourself than others for me personally. Okay, because others, you know, we're all flawed. Did they really mean it? Maybe they don't realize. They they have no idea how this had an impact on me. But forgiving myself for believing something about myself or holding myself back. Um, it can be very paralyzing, you know, and it's very, it takes courage and boldness to take that step, you know, towards the dream. Um, so what I think would be helpful and both for forgiving others and for forgiving yourself is to write the list, just go for it. And all the things where you have, you have a narrative about yourself and excuses that are holding you back. And so write those down. You write them down, write all of them. I don't care if you have a thousand of them, get them all out of you. And see, that's the thing with coaching. So when I'm coaching, it's like more, keep going. I say that, keep going, (laughs) keep going because they got, you got to get it all out, get it out. So you get it all out. And then it's the classic. I mean, this is a, this has been going on for years or you draw a line down the middle and then you put the phrases that you're supposed to be thinking. You you get rid of the negative, but you have to replace it. So if you're going to get rid and forgive yourself of those things, what are you going to replace it with? So it's, it's an important exercise to, to press reset. You got to press reset when you forgive yourself and go, okay, no more, no more. I'm releasing you from this, this thought. I'm releasing you from this. You're not going to bear this burden anymore. You're not going to live with this anymore. What you're going to live with now is this truth about you. Now you're gonna, I want you to step into this. And so you, you're giving yourself the options. What are my options then? If I don't believe this, ah, what do I get to believe? Write them down and then step into them. Okay, starting now. And really it's a fresh start. When you're done listening to this, do it and then carry on. <laughs> you know? It's not a big therapeutic thing you have to do. It's, it's a decision you make. It's an action item for tackling your dream. And if I can, I'd like to add, too, that it's not easy and it's really uncomfortable Um, (laughs) because just now you were saying that you'll tell people to keep going 
or you know and then what or and and what's next and you've done that with me before and like it always gets me on the spot and and I get really uncomfortable and I'm like ah, I don't know this is a good question and I really have to think about it and it's it's hard it's work like you know we have all of these things that we're suggesting as ways to tackle your dreams like forgiveness and time and and how to tackle fear within tackling your dreams and I think it's really important to to remember that it it is there is going to be some uncomfortableness Mm -hmm. and it is going to be work. Like it's, it's not a cakewalk. (laughs) It is required to setting your dream free. And it's almost like, I hate to break it to you, but (laughs) it is a pertinent and necessary step to setting your dream free, to unlocking and having both hands chasing after it. Um, And so the sooner you get it done, the better. And you're right. It's not easy. Because it is a very um, uncomfortable but necessary step to take and that we need to talk about more for people so that they go after it. If this got your wheels turning or if you have any more questions, please email us. We would love to hear your questions and hopefully answer them for you at dothatwellpodcast at gmail.com.